Hey you guys, welcome back. It is my second video and it's long overdue. So today I am going to be playing with some Ellie Girl products as well as telling you my labor and delivery story and even some more than that. So you know what, thanks for tuning in again. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So I'm gonna start with, you know, priming my face. Um, well, I have the Ellie Girl Pro Prep HD High Definition Smoothing Face Primer. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. So, uh. So it was February the 25th, uh, it was a Thursday, and you know, I went in for my uh, regular checkup, I had an OB appointment, and then I had an antepartum appointment where they go ahead and check um, like my blood pressure, if baby's moving, my fluid, you know, the heartbeat, all things like that. So, uh, because I was high risk, and I was high risk because of a few things, because I had hypertension, uh, and I was technically overweight, and had the gestational diabetes I had to go to um, doctor's appointments much more often than I did with my first just because you know these problems they are sneaky and they can have all sorts of conditions arise so you know they were just taking really good care of me at my OB so uh, you know I went in for my regular checkup and um, you know it was funny because I was just there and the lady who did my uh, exam you know we were on a kind of on a first name basis just for the fact that you know I was there a week every week uh weekly and then um sometimes a, a little more than that just you know at the advice of my doctor um so you know she was checking everything my blood pressure was a little on the high side but you know nothing concerning to them just for the fact that um you know i was near the end of my um pregnancy so you know that was kind of to be expected so they you know they were just really okay yeah we're expecting this so um when the blood pressure portion was over um because you have to relax you know they're not gonna mess with you you're just sitting back in a reclined chair um with a cuff on and with um you know like some belly bands on to detect baby's movements um she's just like all oh, right now we check we're gonna check you know the baby's positioning your fluids things like that so um here she comes just you know with the ultrasound machine she's checking her she's like oh you know she's doing great she's still head down um you know everything looks good let's check your fluid so then here comes the fluid part and uh, she's just like oh wow you know this is very concerning and um you know i'm just like well you know what is she's like you know have you been peeing your panties you know she was like have you had any gush of fluids recently or things like that i was like you know it's funny that you say that because uh, for the past couple nights i've been getting up i've been having to pee like every hour uh, i thought i peed myself twice uh, but it turns out that my amniotic fluid was low which is not a good thing especially because i was only about 37 weeks and so she was just like well you know i'm gonna tell the doctor and we're gonna see what um she says we're gonna go you know by her advice so um she tells the doctor and the doctor's like wow okay so i'm just sitting in there waiting to see what's gonna happen and she comes back and she's like hey you're having a baby today i said today i was like i'm on the schedule for you know an induction next wednesday i still got about six days left totally unprepared you know uh, uh my babysitter he won't come in until uh saturday he won't he wasn't supposed to come in until monday you know to watch my son which is my dad you know his girl Paul. And I was just freaking out. I was like, you know, this can't be. She was just like, nope, you're going to have to have a baby today because your fluids are low. And, you know, that's dangerous to both mom and baby. And so, you know, I was freaking out. And then, um, you know, they moved me to the delivery room. I had to text my family, you know, tell them what was all going down. <laughs> I still had all these loose ends. I didn't even pack my hospital bag because, you know, my first, it didn't come until 39 weeks. And so, you know, I was just freaking out just because my house was a mess. I was still in the nesting mode. And I just felt like it was really unfair for me to be completely unprepared this time, you know? So uh, I was really counting on being prepared. Like, oh, this is going to go so much better than, you know, my first induction. I'm going to be prepared. I'm going to feel like I'm on top of the world. No, it was the complete opposite. So then, um, next I'm going in with the Ellie Girl Pro Matte Foundation and the color uh, medium beige. So then, you know, they take me to the L&D room. It was a very nice room. They tell me, hey, you know, you need a strip. Um, I got a COVID test. I never knew what it was like to be brain fucked for a good 30 seconds, and it did not feel good. Um, so essentially, you know, I was just 
getting prepared for the whole show. Oh, wait. I need to do my eyeshadow first. Or, wait, I need to do my brows. Sorry. <sighs> so, you know, I was just really mad about the whole thing. I was like, why me? Why right now? You know, the whole, the whole just the whole shebang. I just thought it was so unfair. Uh, so, you know, I go in and I get undressed. And, you know, they, they're just like, okay, you know, it's time to get the show started. You can't deliver on your own. So I was just like, okay, whatever. So then I was only one centimeter dilated, one freaking centimeter. And to have a baby, you need to be 10 centimeters dilated for everything to go smoothly. Like, it's just, you know, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. So um, they checked me, and what do you know? I was only one centimeter. I'm gonna go in with the Ellie Girl Brow Pomade in Soft Black. So now that I have my brows filled, I am gonna go ahead and use the Ellie Girl Pro Conceal HD High, Defi Edition High Definition Concealer. This is an OG, everyone has messed with this, and it's pretty darn good because it is very cheap, especially for its quality. So anyways, back to um, my labor story. So anyways, you know, I go to l and and you know, they tell me, you know, go ahead and get dressed. Um, you know, we're going to take care of you, right? So now it's just time to play the waiting game. The hurry up and wait game, actually, is what I would call it. Um, so I got dressed. And to tell you guys, I was completely alone just because the fact that, you know, I, my babysitter, he wasn't here yet. And the fact that uh, COVID, you know, just everything, just the whole unplanned part really took me out because I really thought I was going to have my support there. But I could not just because of the circumstances and how how fast they were going and, you know, things like that. So I got dressed. They checked me. I was only at one centimeter. And, you know, I was just really salty at the world at the moment just because of the fact that, you know, I was just like, man, I was supposed to deep clean my house. You know, like we were on a plan with this one and she decided, you know what, I'm going to come early. So um prior to this uh, i had an appointment that tuesday you know like i said it was only thursday and i was only there for like a checkup um well that checkup was only supposed to be 15 minutes well you know that didn't go as planned so yeah so my doctor i told him like hey you know we're doing this induction i refuse to get the foley bulb the foley bulb is a double-sided balloon that they insert into your uterus and your cervix and it basically stretches it out it stretches it out for you and instead of having to use medicine to dilate your cervix and things like that um it does it mechanically and let me tell you it's just a balloon a double-sided balloon so you know like here's your cervix one on this side one on the side of your uterus and it expands let me tell you guys and it only uses saline but it hurts so bad I was initially scarred from my first one because the fact that we lived 40 minutes away from a hospital and the drive was long and you know it just really hurt I, t I should have told him hey I really don't want the Foley bulb I refuse it I will be a very compliant patient besides the fact that if you know you guys tell me I need that like if it's life or death okay I'll do it but if we don't need to do it I don't want it so he told me oh you know if you're only about a centimeter dilated um I can get you to three or four and then your body will naturally take over so he was just like, you know, don't don't be too worried about that. So I was really excited. And so when I got there, they were like, oh, we need to talk about our options, about how, you know, we're going to get you to this 10. And so, you know, I was just really oh, like this day was just completely shitty. And, you know, I was over it already. So um, my doctor who was going to deliver me, he wasn't on call that day. It was another one named Miss Linda. Miss Linda was very nice. She was very caring, very you know, I'm not putting up with your shit. And I love people like that just for the fact that I'm like that. And so, um, you know, she came and, you know, she took care of me. So I initially did not have to do the Foley bulb, even though I did not want it. They still gave it to me as an option. And um, I ended up taking Cytotec, something like that. It's a pill that you just put under your tongue or the side of your cheeks and your mucous membrane absorbs it and, you know, gets the liver going. So, uh... I did that. So while I had taken these doses of Cytotec or Cervotec, something like that, an induction pill, um, you know, I was really just sitting there and playing the waiting game. So that's what we did. And, you know, that, that part took the longest. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Um, after carving my brows with the LA Girl Pro Concealer, I'm going to go in with this palette. It's called There's a Dream. It's actually a very beautiful palette. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. Um, it did come a little broken, but I did have to repress the shade, but it still works. But yeah, this is the palette. Isn't she pretty? Yes. Um, let's go for like a smoky eye look. What do you guys think? Um, 
So essentially, uh, that was the longest part because I was admitted. I was not like ex I was not. I was admitted as like you know an emergency and not you know planned. That was the hardest part of it all because they had to look at the staffing issues. And while there wasn't enough staff, um, it was nothing but C sections that day. And you know um, complications arise anytime, any moment. Life does not wait for anyone, especially with newborn babies. So um, after I started that dose. Uh, I remember saying, I remember them checking me and I was at a three or four and they were like, hey, you know, we're going to start the Pitocin and that brings on the contractions and it's going to dilate you further. So this is the real show. So, and not the prep part, you know, and so I was completely excited just for the fact that, you know, I was really done being pregnant. I don't know if you guys actually follow me or pay attention to what I post, but I was always posting myself crying just for the fact that I was sick of being pregnant. I said, bet you my ass won't get pregnant again no more uh, so anyways they came in after the initial um starting of the pitocin and they said hey we have to stop the pitocin because the labor floor is so crazy right now we don't have enough staff we don't have enough supervision on you and that's not safe at all especially if something were to happen acutely so they stopped the pitocin and they were like but your body is doing its own thing so it's not completely you know halting the process so i was still contracting and things like that but they just couldn't um you know, give me that extra oomph. So, uh, why I did cry about that, I ended up literally just going to sleep. And in that time, um, in that time, uh, I woke up in pain because, like I said, my body was still contracting and, you know, just doing its own thing. Didn't give a fuck. Did not waiting for anyone. Um, I did wake up and I was just in pain. And I said, hey, you know, I want the epidural. They're like, hey, we can't give you the epidural because everyone is completely busy. And so they gave me, you know, like some Tylenol. I'm not going to lie. It didn't work. Uh, but in that time, um, sorry, you guys. It's just, ugh, mom brain is real. Uh, so in that time. So in that time, I was just sitting there in pain, just in and out of consciousness. And then when I say consciousness, it's, I will take a nap in between. Um, and then the next day came, well, you know, the morning came and they're like, okay, we got all these C-section babies. They're all just fine. And you guys, I heard so many baby cries. I was so jealous. Like, oh my gosh, like I want that to be me already. Like you would just hear a baby cry and I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord, for letting this baby get here safely. And then I'm just like, okay, I get it. You're here. You can stop crying. I'm still pregnant. Um, so yeah. So then, uh, you know, since I called my dad to say like, hey, you know, I need you here a bit earlier. Can you make it? And he was just like, well, you know, I have to finish this job I'm doing and, you know, I'll, I'll be there. He, um, you know, it was Friday the next day already, the next morning. And he was just like, hey, I can be there Saturday, but that's completely the earliest and unless you like really need me so i'm thinking you know this induction is going to take about 48 hours and i was just like no you can just come whenever right um so i hit up my friend rose and rose was like oh don't worry i'll watch baby t um you know you know you can count on me so you know rose was my babysitter her and her family and i was extremely thankful just for the fact that you know i could count on her especially short notice because i literally texted her crying like hey girl i need you and she's just like what's up what's going on uh you know those are the kind of friends you always want in life so uh with the fact that i had like a babysitter um you know um milana's dad he was there to he was able to be there to come for me just for a little bit because like the fact that you know we still got our son tito he still needs a parent because i don't want him to feel like you know he was left out or anything like oh where did they go why did they just leave me you know but he loves her so he didn't even think that and he's only two so yeah uh yeah i went better than expected he didn't even miss us um so yeah so then you know So then he ends up leaving because, you know, labor is a very slow process. It can be very slow and then go fast or it can be very fast and then go slow. Like it's just every pregnancy is different. So you can't even count on that, uh, even no matter how many kids you have. Right. So. Uh, wow. Um, they started a Pitocin. Um, you know, I, I got to. There was a point where the contractions just got too bad and I had to call my nurses back in and I was like, hey, I absolutely need the epidural and they're just like hey if you get the epidural a little bit too early it can slow your labor process down and maybe even stop it so they're like we don't recommend you get the epidural this is the second time I asked for it um even though I was like in pain and so I was just like okay well what do you what do you recommend and they're like well we can give you some 
IV, like an, an IV uh, painkiller. So I was just like, give it to me now. So she ended up giving me some fentanyl while I bounced on a ball. And I know fentanyl is a very addicting drug, but if it's used right, you do not want it anymore. So, and I see why it's a very addicting drug because as soon as she put it in my IV, I kid you guys not, 30 seconds later, I was on fucking cloud nine. Um, and not the good one either. This was like the, oh my God, I'm gonna throw up. Like I need to lay down before I pass out. And so, um, and essentially that's what happened she gave me the fentanyl i laid back in bed at this point uh true labor has been going on only like a few hours and so you know i was just like damn this labor is gonna take forever um and it sucks that i couldn't even be prepared because i really wanted to do my hair i wanted to be glammed i really did uh especially because it's my second and last pregnancy or you know that's what i'm thinking uh, unless an asian you know wants to put a baby in me uh, anyways um so yes that's how it went down and um man this video is so hard just because i want to tell you guys every single little detail and i cannot um sorry <laughs> so anyways you know true labor has started and it's only been going on a few hours and i'm already tapping out hitting the button like fucking put put a needle in my spine i'm tired of this so after she gives me the fentanyl i lay down and i go back to sleep and so a few hours no like two hours go by and i'm just like man like these contractions still hurt like they hurt so freaking bad and so she comes in and she's just like um like let's check you let's see if you dilated any and so she calls miss linda in. miss linda is my midwife slash doctor she's very amazing um you know miss linda comes in and she's just like okay you know let's just see if you dilated anymore and i did not i was still at a freaking four so i was just so mad just for the fact that i had spent you know weeks uh, in advance preparing thinking that you know i could literally <laughs> uh jump start my own labor but that is not true your body whenever it's ready it's ready there's literally just no point in trying to jump start it the only thing you can do is probably condition and strengthen your body uh, strengthen your body for the real show but other than that no there's nothing you can do safely so um yeah so she told me hey you know you're still out of four uh and i was just like well you know what i need the epidural i was like the IV it already wore off i was like i don't want anymore i was like i really want the epidural so they're all like okay yeah no problem we're gonna get the anesthesia team in here for you and you know we're gonna go for there so I had to wait about 20 minutes for them to come in. And when they came in, oh my gosh, like as soon as I got the epidural, I was like, oh, pure relief, but it wasn't working on my left side. And that's happened to me before with my first, it didn't work on my right side and they had to redo it essentially. But this time I was just tired. Like I was exhausted. Just the whole rush of emotions and rush of events had me tired. So I went back to sleep. I'm telling you guys, I was like asleep for half of this um so i went back to sleep and um i ended up laying on you know the side it wasn't working on because you know the epidural works with gravity so they always just tell you hey you know you need to lay on the side it's not working on that way it can flow to that side so you know i went to sleep on my left side and I, honestly i had an enjoyable sleep because i mean the contractions were doled down to an ache and not so much a pain and so um that being said I just went ahead and you know slept it off I was just like I'm gonna sleep because I won't be getting any sleep after this and um, I'm glad I did because when I woke up oh my goodness I was ooh, I was like ooh, like ooh, it hurts so bad I thought I got hit by a car um so when I woke up I was like hey you know this epidural it didn't kick in on my left side I need you guys to redo it I was just like man I'm gonna have to get you know repoked again just because of the fact that um you know it didn't work this time I'm going in with my naked basics palette just for this black because this palette it has a deep brown but as you can see it's not really that dark on the lid um so yeah so she's just uh, like okay so my nurse was like okay you know I'm gonna call the doctor and you know she's gonna come in and you know i'll call the anesthesia team so the team she only go and page the team first but then she told my doctor next thing i know i'm just waiting there like oh this hurts so freaking bad like wow like it hurts so bad um and i was just like i can't do this for another like 48 hours you know like 
like another 30 hours because I really thought it was going to be a very slow induction. So she came in and she's just all like, oh, hey, well, my nurse came in. And she's just like, oh, hey, the doctor says she's going to check you for diet for progression because the fact that if an epidural doesn't work completely on one side, it, it can mean a sign of progression. So she came in and, you know, I was just laying there like, oh, it hurts so bad. Like, you know, my legs are numb, but I can still feel my freaking uterus ripping apart. <laughs> she's just like, um... She's just like, okay, I'm gonna check you. Um, so then, you know, she shoves her hand up my vagina or whatever. And she's just like, hey. She tells my nurse, she yells to my nurse because my nurse had walked out the room. She's just like, hey, uh, tell the anesthesia team that we don't need them. I was like, and excuse me, why not? Because <laughs> I was so in so much pain. She was like, because I just felt the baby's head. We're about to have a baby. I said, what? Huh? Like, I was still waking out out of my drowsy, drunk sleep. I was like, wait, 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 wait. I was like, I need to call her dad so she can be here. And she's just like, oh, honey, he's not going to make it. I was like, what do you mean? I was like, it took me like 30 minutes to push out my first. Isn't it going to be the same with, you know, her? She's like, no, her head is literally like right there. So I was just like, man. So I ended up having to call Antonio. And I was just like, look, I was like, um, you're not going to make it because she's literally, she's literally right there. And my friend Rose, she didn't get off work until 3, till 3.30. And it was 3.30 already. So, you know, there was just no time. Uh, Milana had like, no, she didn't want to wait at all, obviously. And, um... So, I ended up just having to FaceTime Antonio so he could watch, well, like, well, you're not allowed to record the actual live birth, but they were able to just set it up right there in the back, like, okay, you ready? Like, he couldn't see, you know, like, my vagina, like, if he was just sitting there, like, standing there with me because of the fact that, you know, he had to be home with our son. Um, so... Uh, they were like, okay, are you ready to push? And I was just like, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to push for a good 20 minutes, right? No, I literally started pushing for a good 15 seconds before they started yelling at me. They were like, stop, stop, stop. She's out. She's out. And I was like, what? I was like, you're kidding me. And next thing I know, Milana's out and she is so small and she has so much freaking hair. And she's covered in goop. Uh, well, they handed her to me and, you know, my, like my kids didn't cry when, it come, when they came out. But literally, she came out and they handed her to me. We did the skin to skin and she immediately peed on me. It was hilarious because uh, my son didn't even do that. But my daughter just straight peed on me. Um, so, you know, it was just like a very whirlwind of emotion. I was just like, wow, no, this is crazy. This is insane. Uh, and I technically did it all by myself because Antonio was only able to be there a good four or five hours of it whenever it was at its slowest. So, um you know, I cried and, you know, I was just so glad to not be pregnant anymore. And so, yeah, that's basically, you know, how it went. And labor in total, I was probably only in true labor a good 12 hours. And versus 33, I will take it any day. So, um, I was actually very, very relieved. Although I feel like COVID kind of just, you know, stole something personal for me and my family. Uh, it's still like a very beautiful moment because, you know, it's Mama Lana, you know, she's there, she's with us, she came out safely despite the circumstances. And so, yeah, I was just, overall, I was happy. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I was just happy to not be pregnant anymore, to have my baby girl in my arms, you know, she's with me. So, yeah. Um, so, that is my uh, labor story. So, yeah, I was only in labor for like a good 12 hours and it was absolutely beautiful. Um, I would do it again because just the fact that every labor is different. I really thought this labor was going to be even worse just because the pregnancy was really shitty. Um, yeah, so my dad was like, oh, do you still need me to come? I was like, of course. So my dad literally came for, you know, the first week she was with us because my dad wouldn't, he, we had already, while we were in Germany, my dad was not, he, he did not have. I'd say like the means to drop everything and come because I still do have two younger siblings and then my dad works all the time. So he, I was just really glad that he was able to come and assist me uh, with the birth of my daughter. And so, yeah, I was just very happy. So then he came and uh, the first week, you know, he helped, he cooked dinner, he cleaned up. Um, he helped put her nursery together because, you know, uh, she came so quick because like she came so quick, you know, uh, it was a call like we, we just totally unprepared. I was unprepared. So, you know, he was just very helpful. And then my siblings, you know, like they're really just like a morale booster. Um, if you guys follow me on Snapchat, all I did was record them fight the whole time. Like, that's how funny they are. Um, so, yeah, it was just really nice having them there. And 
I like I enjoyed I enjoyed the state while they were here, even though they got annoying and they started roasting me. They said my dog looked like Megan the Stallion. <laughs> they kept saying Mon Milana looked like Beyonce. Like they were just they were always just, you know, making these these jokes. Uh, um, they're really big Megan the Stallion fans. Like oh, it's hilarious because they're like, oh, my gosh, Megan the Stallion. Like, you know, like they're hilarious. Um, so, yeah, and Baby T enjoyed his Tia and Theo and his grandpa being there. So, you know, it was just really nice overall for all of us. Um, so, I think I'm going to go in with this gold sh foil shade. Oh, yeah, that's very pretty. So, I completed the eyeshadow. It looks a little funky, but it's okay because the whole look is going to pull together. So, you know, bear with me, you guys. Um, so, uh, after having Milana... Um, you know it's my second baby so i was just like you know what i really want to go home if i can and you know after your first baby you can go home within like the first 24 hours granted that there was no complications and that baby is doing well and mom is doing well so you know we were both doing great because my blood pressure was fine and things like that and um so yeah and i was i do really good uh after birth because i'm i'm the type to get up let's go poop let's go pee let's get these painful moments over with i didn't tear thankfully so yeah, everything was everything was great. And so, you know, we went home after the 24 hours and, you know, my dad and my siblings came and it was just very nice having them. So yeah, so, you know, we got to come home and she had to meet, um, you know, some of our family. Um, Baby T, he was just like, who's this? Like, he really took a liking to her, I guess, because she was so small. So yeah, that went better than expected. Next, I'm going with the LA Girl Pro Matte High Definition Longwear Matte Foundation and let me just shake it real quick and it has a pump the packaging is very nice um yeah so i've only heard good things about this so let's go ahead and try i'm just gonna use my beauty blender for this i'm gonna take some on the back of my hand and let it warm up and then i'm just gonna apply the product um oh she looks a little light we'll see if not i'll make it work you guys know me um so yeah uh after having you know just really oh my goodness Am I not medium beige? I'm just gonna get going. <laughs> um, no, like she's a very light side. So it was very nice having them here. Um, I was very thankful just because, you know, I miss my family and they came all the way up to Colorado just to come and see us. And the drive from Colorado to Texas is about 12 to 13 hours. So um, yeah, they made that trip just for us. And wow, this is a very weird formula so now that i have the foundation on that it's way too light it's okay i'm gonna keep going because we're already too far into this um so yes my family was here for a week uh yeah my siblings are actually very hilarious and all i did was laugh while they were here it was just really great all around having them um probably because of the fact that you know they're just extra hilarious so um yeah i really enjoyed having them here and they were actually very funny. My dad was very helpful. And um, so, yeah, they were here from, you know, that Saturday to that Friday. And, you know, when they left Friday, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and do the things I wanted to do before Milana came. And I was like, get my eyebrows done, do some self-care, do a little bit of shopping, you know, just things like that. So, you know, Friday comes. And, you know, Friday's a good day, too. Um, besides, like, my family leaving, uh, they did get home safe thanks to the lord um i did go get my brows done and i you know i felt perfectly fine i was just like wow you know like the compared to the pregnancy the actual labor was not that bad right and so um you know despite you know those hardships i was very thankful that you know i had just you know at least i got it done at least it was over and at least everyone came out safe and so you know i was just very happy very at peace you know just the whole thing so then here comes the next day. The next day they said, okay, hey, you know, you need to come in and get your blood pressure monitored um, because the fact that things can happen right after delivery and you not know. So Saturday comes. I go in and, you know, I'm getting checked for my blood pressure and the normal blood pressure I think is like 120 over 90. My blood pressure was like 190 over 101. So I essentially was very mad. Um, I'm also going to bronze using um, this Fenty cream, but don't worry it's yeah whatever um 
just cheating a little bit so yeah uh, they were like hey we have to admit you again and they were like this is not safe uh i ugly cried just for the fact that you know i have a newborn at home and you know they're wanting to keep me again they were just like look you know your kids need a mom and you know if you go home you know something bad could happen and we won't be there to you know assist you so you know i cried ugly tears because you know i just want to be home with my kids and um they started something that's called uh nifedipine and i literally bottomed out like i felt like i was gonna pass out i was like no freaking way and um you know they were just like it's good that means it's working they're just like, um, we're going to admit you for 48 hours. They're like, that's, you know, the least amount of time. And in those 48 hours, it's going to be hard. It's going to be sad being away from your babies. But, you know, they need a mother. They're like, you're only going to be gone for 48 hours of their life. And that's it. And so, you know, I was, I felt better just knowing that, you know, they were really trying to get me out as fast as possible and treat me. But that, too, didn't go as planned. Um, uh, they were having trouble finding uh, a concoction that was safe for breastfeeding um for me to uh be on that was effective um so that was hard on its own um i was getting very anxious and you know like very mad overall because of the fact that you know i do have like kids at home that i want to be with and um so yeah it recurred uh then they started this thing called magnesium therapy and it's basically just them pumping magnesium into your body until uh your blood pressure gets under control or it just lowers and let me tell you guys magnesium therapy is not fun like they tell me oh you're gonna feel like you're drunk and i was like oh no problem you know they're like no um it's the bad kind of drug like not the fun kind and boy were they right um i was weak i was dizzy i had a catheter i hate catheters i'd rather do my business on my own um so yeah they just kept pushing all this stuff into me and i cried because you know i wanted to be with my kids um so my mother-in-law she was like oh i'm gonna fly in i'm gonna go help with the babies that way your stress your stress level isn't so high so her and my sister-in-law they came and i was so glad um even though i really just wanted to be home with my babies on my own you know so um yeah so you know god makes a way because my dad he had just left and my dad he couldn't take like all the time off because he already took a week off so he needed to get back to work and then my siblings they needed to get back to school you know things like that so i got admitted again oh my gosh i ugly cried uh i did have a, a nurse named nate he was very helpful he was very funny <laughs> but i do feel bad for nate nate if you're watching this by any chance i'm very sorry i was that patient who cried all the time because he was just like, hee hee hee, oh. like, you know, he was just trying to make the mood lighter, and I was not with it, um, so yeah, sorry, Nate, um, I appreciate you though, man, uh, um, so yeah, and then I had the sweetest night nurse named, uh, Serena, and Serena, she was just very, she was just very understanding, she was like, I know you want to be home with your babies, you know, like, she was just so sweet, healthcare workers are just a different type of kindness, in my opinion, um, so yeah, so I was the only patient in the ICU because literally nothing was going on at the hospital except like, yes, there was a COVID floor, but I was the only one in the ICU. So my nurses, they just had an easy day at work because I was just so salty. I didn't want to ask for anything. I didn't even want to eat because my butt was still sore from delivering. So yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> so um, with my in-laws there, um, Antonio, he came to visit me, of course, but I still just wanted to be home. Because, you know, just being away from your kids is another type of pain, especially when you have a newborn. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, so, that's basically, you know, what went down. Um, I thankfully was able to um, go home the next day. Not the next day. Uh, I got a middle Saturday and I was able to go home on Tuesday because my blood pressure they did get under control. Um, they... Put me on these medications called the beta law and nifedipine and basically just keeps your blood pressure um under control they were like you know if you wouldn't have been admitted um at that exact time you know you would have you could have had a stroke you could have had an aneurysm you know because my pressures were so high you know i was very close to death and i just didn't realize that in the moment because i was just so mad the fact that you know i was just like damn i just got out of the hospital and i had to come back in and so yeah i was just very I was just very ungrateful in the moment because I kept praying to the Lord, like, Lord, you know, please help me. Let me get home to my kids. I'll go to church every Sunday, which I am. Um, but, you know, I was just very salty. And my dad, he was 
<laughs> my dad just swears I need to exercise but it was much deeper than that because it was cardiogenic um so yeah I'm glad that I made it out of that <laughs> thankfully barely So, you know, I've been home. Uh, I did go to another checkup. I've been to two checkups since then because today is, what is today? Today is March 12th. So it's been two weeks since I delivered. Milana is officially two weeks old. And then it's been almost a week since I was discharged from the ICU. Um, so, yes. Um, I've been to two checkups and my blood pressure. My blood pressure is actually a bit too low. So they did decrease the medicine I was on. They said I am out of the 10-day danger window. So it's only up from here like i can only have good results from here and if uh i don't it's something deeper than that but so far so good um milana's doing really good she's still on this a little shrimpy side uh dad and brother they really love her like who wouldn't she's just the sweetest little baby um so yeah that's basically you know just what went down and how i coped but i didn't really cope because i was actually very mad the whole time um but yeah, uh, I'm doing good so far. I'm adjusting to being home with my babies again. Um, I really don't ever wish anything bad on any mothers. I'm I'm just wow, like I'm just astounded at the fact that um, you know I was able to just come out pretty much unscathed because some people, you know, they have these lasting side effects for the rest of their life, and I don't. But um, you guys will see me just creating an overall better lifestyle, even though I have dropped. You know, like, I dropped a pregnancy weight plus more, so I weigh less than what I did before I got pregnant. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm very, just very thankful for the fact that, you know, things worked out for me in the end, because they really did. Um, I'm glad that my baby's okay, and then, you know, that I'm just home, and, you know, God just works in mysterious ways, because I was having just a very shitty time before, and now I'm just, like, as thankful as can be. So, yeah, you know thanks to you guys just for listening to my story while i do my makeup um i'm just very thankful overall i'm looking for my sitting powder <sighs> just know that i have never been more thankful to have um you know the ability to just wake up in the morning and enjoy my kids although they can be annoying i love them so much so i'm back um <laughs> After, you know, telling you guys my story, I went ahead and completed this look by throwing some lashes on, um, some eyeliner. Uh, I really don't do lipstick quite yet because uh, I don't know what to do about it. But yeah, uh, this is what it looks like. Yes. So now I'm just going to go ahead and grab some setting spray. Also from Ellie Girl. Uh, it's just a fix and set makeup for extended wear. And I'm going to, oh, comes with two caps and I'm just going to. It smells really good and it tastes kind of good too because I did get some in my mouth. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and now that it's set, I'm going to go ahead and just throw some gloss on because while my lips are recovering from my pregnancy, they're still not where I want them before I put on some lipstick. So let's go ahead and just throw some clear gloss on. So this is the final look. What do you guys think? Uh, my hair is a little out of whack, but that's fine. What do you guys think? I think she looks cute. Just for giving birth, having a baby, and then having like a near-death experience back to back. What do you guys think? So now for the final review of these products. Here is what I think of the things that I got. Um, so this brow pomade, absolutely bomb. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and insert some pictures just because I know my lighting is trash. But um, this is the brow pomade in soft black. I absolutely love this. This is a perfect dupe, maybe even better for the Anastasia um, Beverly Hills pomade. Honestly, I feel like you can do way more with this. Although it is lesser product, uh, it, will, it does mean that you're going to use it faster because... Um, the Anastasia, it does last a long time, but also if you're not very careful with it, it does dry out very quickly. And then next we have the, uh, Pro Conceal since, like I said, you know, this is an OG. Honestly, this forever can have a place in my heart. If I had to use one concealer, uh, brand for the rest of my life, honestly, I would just be fine with this one just because it has a lot of shades. It even has correctors. It even has highlight. Honestly, this is the go on. This is... This is the GOAT because honestly, you really can't beat it. I don't know any other concealer that's as cheap as this one that still gets the job done. 
And then we have the Pro Prep Primer. This stuff, um, it feels just like the, then we have the Pro Prep um, Primer. And honestly, it feels just like the Smashbox Photo Finish. This is just a sample and this is uh, the, um, I think this is just the mini. I have no idea. But honestly, these two are basically the same thing. And this one's a hell of a lot cheaper. Uh, I would use it again. And honestly, it's really good. I like it. Um, you won't like it if you like dimethicone. Honestly, I really don't care. My skin doesn't really do bad with it. But honestly, I really do like it. It's just very silicone-y. Um, if that's your jam, honestly, like me. If you're like me, then you're just going to like this. Because as long as it does its job. And then uh, we have the... LA Girl VIP palette. Honestly, this palette it has so much potential. Um, if you're a beginner, it's great. If you're a professional, it's great. Honestly, it's very forgiving and the payoff is there. It's quite, it's a little bit messy, but honestly, it's really good. But it's a pretty big palette and um, it has very cute shade names. And it comes with a big old mirror if you want to see. <laughs> Don't mind my desk, but yeah, the mirror is huge. And the shade rain is absolutely beautiful. Um, I mean, like, I didn't even mess with them all, but I'm definitely going to be reaching for this in the future. Um, this is not going anywhere. I really like this. So, honestly, if you want to splurge, but you don't want to splurge, this is a really good one. And this is, uh, I think this is their new line of palettes. So, there's absolutely even more, uh, with color shades and, you know, things like that. So, definitely recommend. Um, I didn't have any problems blending. The only thing I had a problem with was the fact that there wasn't, like, a black in the palette, but that's okay because, um... You know, you always have uh, a black eyeshadow on hand. And then, last but not least, oh wait, we have two more things, sorry. Um, I have the Pro Matte Longwear um, Foundation. It's a really good foundation. I'm not gonna lie, it does texture, it does show the texture of my skin just a little bit, but also I haven't dermaplaned. I have not exfoliated, um, you know, all those things to make my face nice and soft. I haven't been keeping up with, but honestly, I really do like this. It's very cheap. It is definitely full coverage. Um, I did not get the correct shade, but there is a pretty big shade range. Um, I would recommend this. Um, I'm going to keep using it even though it's not my shade. I'm probably going to mix it with something else just to make it, you know, my shade is because I'm getting a little bit more tan. But yeah, this is medium beige and it was pretty light. Um, and then we have the Volumatic Full On Volumizing Lash Lifting Mascara. There is nothing special about this mascara. I mean, it's really nice. The packaging is really cute. Um, but honestly, it's a, it's your typical drugstore mascara. Um, it's gonna give you what you're looking for, but honestly, you can find what you're looking for very much closer to home, so you don't have to go and hunt this. Um, I'm gonna use it. Obviously, uh, it takes a lot for my lashes to even sit up because they're so heavy, but this is pretty good, I guess. I mean, uh, it's an ultra black and, you know, it does have pigment and color payoff, but honestly, it's, there's nothing special about it. It's just the mascara. <laughs> And then last but not least, we have the setting spray. The setting spray does smell very good. I have noticed that um, it's not specifically like a dupe. It's not anything special either. Um, it is just a setting spray. It does smell very good. It smells very skincare-y. And yeah, I really like this. I mean, it's just a setting spray. Um, do I find that it's extended my makeup? Honestly, not really. I mean, my makeup only lasts for a good eight hours because I do take a nap. I do chase my toddler around. Um, so yeah, and then I have some oily skin most days. So yeah, this is, it's worth your money. It's just a setting spray because I think girl is very budget friendly. It does have things a little bit more expensive than others, but overall they're a very good brand. They do hold their name and they, they just hold their reputation. I really love them. So you know what guys, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for listening to my story. Even though I felt like I blabbered on and on. Um, I'm very thankful to the Lord that I just made it out of the I made it alive out of the hospital despite everything that seemed against me and um you know I'm really just gonna be on this journey just to taking care of myself so if you catch me in any negativity he just point me out like hey quit before your blood pressure's too high and your heart stops <laughs> um so yeah just you know thank you guys just for the prayers and the blessings and waiting on this video and just being supportive overall like I could not be more I could not be more grateful so, yes, I am here. So, you know, catch me on Instagram, acting a fool on Facebook, Snapchat, wherever. And that concludes this video. And this is the final look that uh, we made together today while I blabbered on and on. So, yes.
look at this oh, sorry this is my hair it's a little messy but i actually love it bye bye